Namaste and welcome to session three of Samskriti Gyan Mala. This session is a continuation of our session two. In session two, we discussed about dharma and how it is distinct from religion, a philosophical perspective. We discussed various dimensions of dharma, a comprehensive definition which comes from different scriptures and different uh, understanding of uh, Indian knowledge system. And then we also discussed about how religion is distinct for it. And then we developed an understanding of Sanatam Dharma, how it is an umbrella term for both. So I would just like to briefly summarize our last session. And then in today's session, we will move ahead from where we left. We'll have deeper discussion on different aspects of Dharma and religion. So uh, some of the key things which we discussed in the last session and Dr. Uma Mahesha Ravji uh, was our key speaker and he gave a very comprehensive understanding of these terms. Sanatan Dharma as used as an umbrella term, an eternal natural way which combines spiritual path, culture, community, a worldview, a philosophical system, a way of being and a total civilization. A very huge encompassing term and one way to look at it is there are two parts of it. One is dharma, one is religion, just for the sake of understanding. Now, let's understand the term dharma, taking from our last session. We can refer it as code of an honor. It's a path of righteousness. Classical meaning of dharma is to hold, to maintain and to keep. If we refer it as Hindu dharma or Hinduism, people refer it as that which makes the life and the universe sustained together. So an idea of coexistence for an individual with the universe, with the world outside. It also refers to Rita, that means order. We learned about the story of Kaushik Muni, how he leaves his responsibility of taking care of his parents, elderly parents, and goes for his uh, sannyas ashram. And after that realizes that Mere spiritual path for individual upliftment uh, would not do good. We have to go through the process of dharma and various aspects of it. If we give up on our duties and then try to attain individual goals, then that is not suggested. We also came across the definition of dharma by Rishi Kanata, uh, the Vaisheshika, and uh, the definition suggests that material flourishing and moksha achieved. Both, where both the things go hand in hand, that principle is dharma. Ramanuja Acharya, the, uh, the rishis who gave us uh, Vishish Advaita, his definition is, is Nishraya sad Sadhanam, a way to achieve higher self, higher good self through good conduct. I means achieving of moksha through good conduct. We also discussed about uh, Karna Parva of Mahabharat, where dharma is defined as capacity to sustain. Dharyati iti dharma. Uh, also the concept of vyasti, samesti and parmesti. So it's a complete uh, system in a way which facilitates our journey in material world and also it helps uh, our spiritual journey later. So it's a kind of system. We also had a word about four ashramas starting from Brahmachara ashram to Grihastha ashram to Vanprastha ashram and Sanyas ashram. Basically a system where a Grihastha ashram will help others when somebody is in Van Prastha uh, or Sanyashastram, how will they sustain? So it's a complete system which dharma facilitates. Then we also had a word about Bhagavad Gita and the idea of Devic and Asuric Gunas. These are the Gunas. So Devic Gunas promotes people living in a dharmic way and Asuric Gunas goes against it. We also had a word about religion, how it is more of an individual journey, a path. Again, many defined systems, different ways of attaining the higher self. And uh, we discussed about how one has to earn the right to achieve his higher self. Uh, through the story of Nachiketa, we discussed that. So these were some key ideas uh, which were uh, profoundly shared by Dr. Uma Mahesha Ravji during our last session. Today's session, we are likely to have it more of participative, discussion-oriented. All the seniors, I request them to give their opening remarks. And after that, uh, we are all free to give our 
interpretations, views, queries, etc. So with that, uh, I uh, come to close of this summary of our session two. And now we open it for the opening remarks. I would request uh, Dr. Uma Mahesha Ralji for his opening remarks. And then we will let it happen in a popcorn style where uh, we can raise hands and speak. Uh, Over to you. Thank you, Vivek. Uh, probably I could, not, I could not have done a better way of summarizing what was discussed in the last session. Uh, it's nice. Uh, I think it has captured the essence of the discussions. Now, the subject is very vast, and uh, we continuously keep on understanding and updating our uh, knowledge of this and the interpretation of some of these things. So at this moment, uh, uh, there's nothing like a much of an opening remarks, but I request the other members, as we thought of originally, that there may be more questions. Actually, the suggestion came from uh, friend Sagar that you know maybe may many more questions are there and doubts are there in the minds of the people. It's better that we discuss that so that you know they don't go back with doubts in their minds after going through these talks. So I now request the members to raise uh, questions and I request to Vivek to facilitate this discussion. Whoever wants to raise a question or make a comment or an observation or whatever you know, whatever uh, adds to our understanding of the subject is welcome definitely. So kindly. Uh, have a have feel free. No, no question is a small question. No question is a big question. Every doubt is a doubt. Actually, when uh, uh, with one example <coughs> in Prasnopanishad, six youngsters wanted to get a better knowledge of the Brahma. They were advised by their respective fathers to go and see Pippala the Maharshi. When they go there, Pippala the Maharshi talks to them initially, tests them and says, you will have to do, actually these six were quite well prepared for getting the higher knowledge. But Pippala the Maharshi found that they are still not up to the standard or mark and gives them one year to do further study, further enhance their capacities and come back to him for, you know, for clarifying their, they had six questions. Six of them had some six questions. Prasnopanishad is about answering these six questions. So he tells them, you come back after study of these uh, issues totally, and then it goes on. Similarly, we have had one session. I'm sure you will have your own doubts. So raise those doubts, and let us try to understand it in a much better manner. Uh, if we are not able to find an answer now here, let us fo uh, focus that point on which we did not get clarity. Uh, one of us, a uh, couple of others can study it further and then clarify that point at some other time, in some other occasion. But we will not leave the subject unanswered, unclarified. So with this, I request the friends to start the discussion. Yes, sir. Can I? Please. Yeah. I have a question. When we say uh, dharma, now with the changing times, like right, we say that dharma has existed, the definition of dharma existed for a lot of centuries. But in with changing times, people's way of living, their thought process keeps changing to accustom to the prevalent challenges of the society, whether you call it as family challenges or societal challenges. So with the change in times, at any particular given point in time, how do you define what is dharma relevant to that period of time? Like what is a guiding principle? Or do people have to seek what could be dharma's definition or fitment for that period of time or given those challenges that they live in? Or does it first of all change in the first place? Uh, does dharma change with changing times? If it does, then how do uh, one identify what is relevant to be followed for his period of time? Because times keep changing, right? Challenges are different from time to time. So this is one very important question. And mostly when we interact with the uh, younger generation, uh, this question is right. And I feel dharma is not static. Uh, learned people have to look into the world practices and modify the practices to suit to the changed environment. Now, this is a very, very complicated process. Actually, there is a sloka. I think it comes in uh, Vishwasas Nama. Acharya Prabhu Dharma, Prabhu Rachutaha, something like that. 
So I also thought, what is the relevance that Vishnu Sahasrama and this is there? Achara Praho Dharma. That means, what is Achara? Achara means the practices that we carry out in society are Acharas. They may be, they may appear religious, social, and other things, family and other things. These are all practices, social practices. That is uh, the social behavior. This is influenced by the Dharma. Actually, Dharma can be seen by these Acharas only. Dharma otherwise is an abstract thing. We can define Dharma by the way people practice, people behave. And this Dharma, when it changes, it changes the Acharas, that is practices. Now, one of the important questions that comes to most of the people is, some of the practices are a load on us. That means to carry out that practice is a burden to us, is a responsibility. We can, if we can get away without practicing it, it will make our lives a little bit more comfortable. That is same as I covered in the culture also. That is our Indriyas prompt us to skip the Achara. Some Achara says you practice this. We have to a little bit exert our muscle movement, toil for it and do it. And temptation is to avoid it. So the practices if they are avoided by each individual for his own convenience, giving his own definitions for the changed environment, that is what now we, we tend to do it. So, I have to go somewhere, I have to do it, or I have to do business, I have to do office, I, so, like this. So, this attitude, if it percolates in the society, no achara, or there is no practice, will finally remain. And Hence, dharma loses its relevance and culture also loses its relevance. When we define culture, we define the culture by the achara of practices only, basically. Because the practices will give the spirit behind that is it to be inferred. But basically what we abstract thing is practices. So, what is the mechanism that has to be implemented? Nagaraj's question is this one. That is, practices are there, some practice is there, that practice appears to be obsolete difficult to carry out, difficult in the environment of a city life or something like that. So all these things, suppose go down and then I, or you have to every yearly once you have to do ceremony to your forefathers who have expired, or many, many such things are there, or conduct some functions in the house like this. These are all burdensome, so skip them. So like that, many other stuff. And similarly, things come also like this. Suppose, let me give an example. In the olden days, there was a practice that a lady who loses her husband remains a widow for the entire life, even if she loses her husband in the engage. That was the practice sometime back. Of course, different societies have fought it in a different way, and finally, a lot of people came under that. Now, similarly, many other practices also will come. They appear to be uh, I mean, irrelevant or obsolete and other things. Who will take care of this is the question. The society has to commission a group of people, learned people, who, without falling to the temptations of the senses, look more objectively on a perspective basis and recommend changes, necessary change. So this has to be carried out by elders of the society. Then dharma changes. And if such things become little more, then a new smoothie may come. Like Manu Smuti told something, then Agnivalka Smuti, Parasara Smuti, then Devala Smuti, some Smuti. Similarly, some of the things have come it like in Arthas Astra and other things also, some of the practices have been changed. So this is the substance and this the society has to manage very carefully and very talentedly. This was managed in Sanatana Dharma earlier by way of various organizations, functions, like I told Kumbhi Mela or some other such, this one, where intellectuals used to gather, find out a solution, not fall for the sensual pleasures and other things, and do it. So I think I have answered a part of the question of Nataraj. I, I know what Sagarji tried to explain, which is relevant in terms of what he said. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't think there is a straight answer as well to what I asked, because I think it's, it's very much... Uh, mixed into the society that how society picks up if something has to change uh, while keeping intact with the with the core 
uh, intensity of sticking to the spirit of the uh, culture or dharma while the personification of it may change from time to time so i was trying to uh, get to the bottom i don't know if it is really possible but uh, how do i identify at a given point in time whether i'm really following what i should be following uh, i know customs are there but i know that dharma is not necessarily customs right so uh, how do i know whether i'm the right the right path of following dharma was essentially uh, sagar ji did try to explain it partially but i i'm not sure there is a straight answer to it as well yeah i think sagar ji mentioned a little bit about the religious practices some religious practices mm-hmm. and uh, how they become uh, time to time they need to be renewed or they need to be relooked and calibrated accordingly but i think uh, i'll just add to natraj's question and again uh, pose it to anyone who would be interested to take it uh, there is a concept of kala dharma that as per the time Uh, certain practices changes but uh, as if now in my understanding uh, am uh, will i be true if i correct if i think that dharma principles are same that doesn't change uh, in my view it's larger good and good for uh, long long term and larger uh, society or larger existence uh, that that is one foundational principle i personally feel uh, which dharma holds in all times so considering that would it be okay that customs can be modified in order to see the see the larger good time to time and uh, principles remain same anyone can yeah i would like to yes supplement to what uh, the discussion that is going on two three things uh, as uh, sagar ji pointed out uh, dharma changes to have one straight answer mahamahobadhyaya pullala sri ramachandrudu Uh, he wrote one smriti known as kaundinya smriti which addresses this question as to what needs to be followed now with changing times what is the yoga dharma or kala dharma so he has come out with a book known as kaundinya smriti it is published by unesco publications and they it's a sanskrit shlokas he has compiled them what can be followed by us now keeping in view the yoga dharma that is one anybody who is interested can get that booklet and see actually in one of the birthday celebrations of my grandson i distributed a copy of this book to all those who attended the function that time that's a separate story second thing is when some of these scriptures and uh, our texts are there they have been there for several hundreds of years when constitution came into picture when constituent assembly was making discussions for preparing the constitution several issues were there before them about the religion dharma and all that i believe some senior members of the constituent assembly met for kanchi paramacharya to seek his opinion about the uh, items to be included in the final constitution paramacharya advised them not to touch about the practices of various sects among the hindu society you don't try to integrate them try to don't make them there are several practices in the remotest corners of this country people have been practicing as long as they are not against the society don't touch them don't ever think of touching them the diversity should be maintained in the country that is what the advice given by kanchi paramacharya to the members who were part of the drafting committee in the constituent assembly now this was narrated i have not read about this this was narrated by the present kanchi swami ji in a small meeting in hyderabad held in uh, shanmukha temple in uh, the second about area i i was also there in the meeting so he narrated this about the constitution so therefore constitution has given us certain guidelines so if you are having a practices practice which is against the constitution well that cannot be accepted so therefore certain practices on a day to day basis whether religious practices or personal practices which will fall with the constitution come into con- conflict with the constitution they have to be subordinated to the constitution but there are hundreds and hundreds of other practices which constitution doesn't speak about like for instance we heard what has happened about the sabarimala temple issue in the supreme court itself therefore you know they, these issues will keep coming up periodically for instance caste system constitution doesn't recognize untouchability constitution doesn't recognize we cannot have that as a practice that practice is against the constitution which we have accepted ourselves therefore constitution is one barometer 
the second thing is what the elders of the current generation learned people guide us on these paths that is the guidance reference point for us to accept this why do people say you keep on listening to these ravanas and other things you know when uh, learned people give speeches go to them listen to them raise questions there get the doubts clarified to them now this is this is the reason why on a continuous basis the sanyasas are supposed to go around the country and educate people on those things now the pithadpatis are doing to some extent and also some pravachanakars are also there across the country in different languages they are also doing it so they are guiding the society but definitely if you look into very details of what they are trying to teach it is not against the constitution they are reiterating some of those practices which are good for the current generation like for instance in telugu there is one gentleman mena mana narsimarao by name he actually comes out with a reformist approach in narrating about the dharma and other principles applying them to the current generation he has been awarded padma shri also recently so therefore we have to identify some of those people who are able to guide the society on a continuous basis because yoga dharma there is something like a yoga dharma it can change from time to time but there are certain things as a, if you go back to uh, our scriptures all upanishads are called shrutis all other things are called smrutis smruti is by memory remembrance shrutis heard by some eminent people and then that became a veda or a upanishad and all that what is there in the upanishads is non negotiable it is eternal but what is there in the smrutis as sagar pointed out is possible of change society can take into account the current situation you cannot say that i will have five husbands or five wives other way it's not possible these practices were there but those practices have gone over today's generation today's society is keeping the society in order you know dharma when you originally defined it it is also keeping the society in order if the society has to be in order today you cannot have some of those practices you have to give up those practices whether it is untouchability whether it's a caste system or you know polyandry all these things are not desirable for the current society therefore give up don't have them at all so constitution doesn't agree with that it's also a different matter even otherwise also dharma also will not say today if dharma is to be redefined in respect of these items they will say no it's not possible if society today has to be kept intact these practices are not done these practices cannot be accepted so i think this is the type of understanding we have we we can keep on getting advice from other people books reading and you know some of those things for interpreting some of these things yeah, definitely we can get it but if you read a good interpretation of bhagavad gita uh, given by swami rangaranandananda in three volumes that book is available to us in the ramakrishna mission it's a exhaustive uh, interpretation of that he interpreted it uh, sort of you know connecting with the current times i must say every answer should read that book if you read that book thoroughly you don't need to read many other books at all because bhagavad gita itself is a, a a commentary on upanishads now when he when krishna said all these things swami rangaranandha picked up those things elaborated the shlokas and then you know connected with the world literature world philosophy he quotes several books in that from world philosophy also and then narrates to us to the current generation so definitely we can go through and uh, sort of you know Uh, inform our girls in a better manner as to what needs to be done what need not be done what cannot be done so we will stop this discussion at this stage i suppose move on to another question if there are i just wanted to um, draw us from what you just said the constitution is is not uh, mm, the hindu specific and then it it has it's not dwelled into the hindu specific uh, customs or traditions in that case and you gave right example of uh, shabarimala so when the constitution itself is has not defined this and not dwelled into this aspects why should supreme court which has to be functioning within the ambit of the legislation passed by the uh, constitution or why our parliament why should it dwell and then pro- give the uh, deliver the judgments on on such aspects sir see uh, constitution will not say so many things actually constitution if you have to say everything has to be included everything can become much more litigant in litig- litigation can only increase constitution has given a broad framework to us but why supreme court supreme court has entered into the picture because they said 
it involved the rights of certain women but i can also tell you this much what supreme court says is not purely an objective considerations we know that there are individuals sitting in supreme court who have their own ideology in a concealed manner the present supreme court uh, chief justice is a one you know who encourages cultural marxism wokeism is what it is called in mm-hmm. modern terms he is from the school from harvard so he has not given up that so the, there is a, a strain of that once in a while that comes out from him in his utterances but over a period of time i think the system has the capacity because he is not going to be there permanently now the supreme court judgment is going to be there permanently like for instance on ramalaya uh, uh, on ayodhya uh, we the, we had to have an intervention by supreme court because it was converted into a property right it was projected as a, a property mm-hmm. issue so supreme court entered into as a property issue and then try to see where does the right lie and all that finally okay they gave the order so therefore sometimes we feel you know when the order is not convenient to the supreme court should not intervene sometimes we welcome the intervention of supreme court when the order is uh, good in our favor therefore it is up to the people who are sitting there to see whether they should interfere or not still they say sometimes also that this is a matter on which only a law has to be passed by the parliament we cannot interfere they are mentioning once in a while we also see that but some trend some some uh, uh, thinking of the supreme court's mind can be known by their judgments by their utterances and once in a while what is happening if something has to be corrected well, that that responsibility has to be the parliament ultimately parliament will have to do the correct thing what what is said by the supreme court can also be corrected by the parliament Yeah, up to a point. So again, you know, it gets debated whether we can change the basic structure of the constitution, as per the case of one of the Bharati case and all that. You know, so it's a continuous debate. It's a continuous learning for ourselves. So Supreme Court need not interfere. That's why there are so many things on which they don't interfere. Also, okay. right. I want to be specific about that. Uh, why are we not targeting our activities uh, specific to Dharma and Interest? For me. Uh, vivek band is one such thing that uh, uh, we are not targeting uh, in that aspect uh, that is my point so we have been doing the, uh, the activities of vivek band that uh, we do activities like uh, you play sport uh, and you uh, uh, whatever you do and there are other activities involved in that vivek band but are we saying that it is related to our dharma or not uh, one thing is when you are talking to the youngsters engaging them you can take up any a lot of topics are there which can be taken up actually every month you can take up one activity every week you can take up one activity it's a question of how much organizing capacity we have how much time our volunteers are able to give their time to engage these youngsters slowly you are building up a, a youth force who are able to appreciate some of these good things in life these good activities are also related to our own culture and uh, sort of you know dharma dharma in operation what it means be good do good so that is what you know mahabharata says there is one poem small poem which appears today even today in one of the dailies on the editorial page captures that poem kurulaya vyanarinchana naravar apriyam tana manam guna karu ta norulakuna seyakuniki parayanam dharma palamulake ellam what you would not like others to do to you please don't do it others now this is the dharma of all the dharmas this is what this shloka says in the simplest manner so you do good you be good and do good these are dharmic principles okay it is it is stated in a manner understandable to us easily instead of the making it complicated what is dharma you you convert them into good conducting youngsters with all this so then you have start respecting your culture which includes let us say respecting your elders also so therefore all those things come out of these practices these practices have to become their daily routine then uh, they are on the dharmic path then they can be taken to principles later so you tell them the, you teach them the discipline initially then you give them a meaning of to the discipline why why are we doing all these things at a later stage when they are ready to observe that component that we can give that component to them at that stage if you start talking about it dharma without practices then they think we are you know trying to propagate hinduism that's not the idea 
we are trying to use our youngsters take dharma principle to them so that they conduct themselves in a good manner so that is the idea today but some of these things over a period of time can be taken up after all our organization is very young and we are trying to build up tough through a volunteer force and we need sufficient number of good volunteers with capacity to understand these aspects and spend time today our challenge sir. is spending yes, time contribution of time you know okay right sir uh, may may be permitted to add a little one sentence to your please please okay. please Vinay ji, uh, I don't know um, when you said that we are not doing or we should do more activities uh, which support dharma. One such activity, Vivek ji and Natraj ji knows it very well. As a part of CLC, we were conducting uh, sambad programs across this uh, institutions, and the, the as a part of sambad program, we have uh, in fact selected many of the topics uh, which are related to our dharma and promotion of dharma. The basic idea of that uh, connecting such sambad with such topics. Beat uh, marriage is a contract, or beat the relationship in uh, in our traditions, or beat father and son relationship in our traditions. There were many debates which have been conducted on the topics, various topics which we specifically and very consciously uh, related that to our dharma. The topics were related to our dharma, so that was one of the such steps which we have uh, initiated. And they were um, probably, as as rightly uh, chairman has said. Depending upon our bandwidth, we can definitely go ahead and then conduct many such programs in and in on many such occasions also. Yes, uh, Vinay ji, I'll just add one thing, and then uh, uh, before we move on to Dr. Prasanna Kumar ji, there are two questions, and I think he also wants to have a say. Uh, I would just add something. Uh, many times when we are working towards dharma, it doesn't have to be a target towards dharma. It's the way we conduct. Uh, I think long back uh, once Pai Sab has explained this. Many times, how we conduct an activity, in the method of it, many things are implied. For example, when we start things in certain way, when we do Shanti Mantra, when we do Omkar Ucharan, we bring subtle aspects of it. And specific to this Vivek band, since you were referring to it, we had every aspect of dharma involved into it. For example, when we were discussing about Indian weaves, we were discussing about Indian food, we had an imp uh, implied question to all the students when we told them, discuss about what is good in these Indian aspects of food. There the concept of Ahinsa comes. Also, their concept of existence with uh, the universe comes. Our theme this year was our culture, our life. And in that, one aspect comes that if you go for, with the Indian lifestyle, it is more in coherence with the universe outside. It doesn't uh, exploit nature. So Indian weaves, we have discussed many aspects about it, including food and Indian games also. How they are less resource hungry, and they, these are these are all subtle aspects which actually uh, works on dharmic principles only, but we do oh. not explicitly speak on that. Mention, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to thank Umo Meshwarji also for his insights and Venu yeah. also. And yeah. Thank you, Vimalji also. Thank you. Yeah, thank I you. I sincerely appreciate when I I be now and youngsters to keep asking questions and uh, raise the questions and get them sorted out, and that thinking process is what we really look forward in this Gyanamala. I showed that whatever uh, uh, Modiji has started, it is taking a, a correct shape, in my opinion. Yeah, that's a uh, off remark. Now, uh, coming to the topic that is there, uh, as uh, Nataraji and uh, Shri Sagarji and Uvaracharaji and Venuji, all of you have elaborated the topic being Dharma and religion. I was reading a book in which the Dharma is derived from a word which is having a root, a dri, D-H-R-A. It's an English book. I'm, I'm not very good at all in Sanskrit, but what it says, dri means the thing that holds together. It is a glue that holds together the society, the families, the institutions, etc. So that is where the dharma derives the word, and there is no equivalent word in English. And we all know that the religion, which is again a kind of a, a Western kind of a thought process, slightly resumed, and seeks to reach God rather than knowing. So if you look at it, Hindutva or so-called Dharma, Hindu Dharma or Sanatana Dharma always encourages any kind of a opposite views very well. Try to accommodate, evaluate, deliberate and discuss. It gives that kind of openness, unlike in others. If you look at the materialistic aspect also, it encourages and then deliberates on that. Like Charvaka or yeah. Lokayata schools of thinking also is there in that. Whereas in a religion, a bit regimented, 
for sure. And they try to say that this is the only path to go. And there is no other way. Whereas Sanatana Dharma doesn't do that. As I told earlier, Dharma is that what binds the society together. And a Dharma is the one that divides the society or breaks it up into parts and make the people to fight with one another. Dharma is nothing more. I'm reading out from the book that I'm reading now. Dharma is nothing more than the realization of the Supreme and acting in every small act of your life with that Supreme present in your mind. If you are able to do so, you are performing your Dharma. I hope Vinay, as explained by Modi ji as well as uh, Umar and Venu ji, I hope you understood the way we conduct ourselves, we we'll show our Dharma. And probably we call it in different ways, but that's like the, the samskara of ours will be manifesting that. I'll just conclude with one thing saying, very interesting thing about Hindu Dharma, the only dogma that Hindu Dharma admits is the one that does not permit a dogma. So with that, I would like to conclude. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. Sir, uh, um, as far as the uh, Constitution of India is concerned, Constitution of India is uh, India specific. Hinduism is or Hindu Dharma is not India specific. Dharma is universal for Hindus. Don't Hindus have right to have Dharma independent of Constitution? How can Constitution of India dictate Hindus across the world? That is what first question. Second question is, if Rome or church can decide what is the Christian law or religious practice of Christians, if Arab world or ulema or OIC can decide what is the Islamic law or religious practice of Muslims, why and how Supreme Court can interfere in the universality of Hindu law or Hindu religious practice? Who is India to decide what is Hindu to do? Okay. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, but the point here is, India is associated with Hinduism and Hindus. Because substantial portion of the Hindus, about 82% or so, are living in India. So therefore, India is uh, meant to be that. Secondly, if church, Pope decides for all the Christians in the world, similarly, some ulema decides for all the Muslims in the world, Hindu dharma's beauty is that there is not one person who will decide on behalf of all other Hindus all over the world. This is one of the reasons how Hinduism has also survived. The onslaught of if Hinduism was also monotheistic with one person deciding all these things, probably with about you know 2000 years of invasions and ruled by others, Hinduism would not have survived in this country. The beauty of Hinduism is just take the example of Kashi. You know, Kashi, the Shivalinga was removed two or three times. But we have a way of again, you know, bringing it and bringing that purity by reinstalling it here. So, and then, you know, people, I, I can have a small deity in my home. It is not necessary that I am a Hindu only if I go to a temple. The practices certain Hindus follow are not the end of it. These are all things towards a higher goal of realization of that Brahma. Repairing you, go to your temple or have some puja at home or have these practices of dharmic principles. These are all preparing you to that higher level. So, Supreme Court does not interfere in any of these things. But one question comes up, Venu has pointed out, why should Supreme Court do it? But the point is, when somebody says, it is my right, should question, Supreme Court entertain it or not? Yeah, it's a debatable question. But... Some one lady is also deferred with them. It's not that it is a unanimous opinion. Even in the court also, we know that, you know, on a given, sometimes there is a majority judgment. Uh, there are a few who differ from that. It, it indicates there is another point of view. So that point of view may gather momentum over a period of time. We don't know. Time will decide about that. It may gather momentum and they may set aside the present order uh, by, given by the Supreme Court. So, it, it, there is, because we do not have one independent authority to decide that, we should not compare ourselves with what others are doing. Ours is not an organized religion in that manner. Ours is a religion. That's why Supreme Court, when talked about Hinduism, they said it's a way of life. They did not say it's a religion at all. It's a way of life is what the Supreme Court said. 
Radha Krishnan, when he wrote the word book about uh, Hinduism, I know, in 1903 or so, 1926, when he gave three lectures in Oxford, he also said the same thing. It's a way of life. It's a way of life to sustain the universe. The way of life is such, it can sustain the universe. When we say, Vasudeka Kutumbakam, why are we telling that? This world is not used by others. We are using it. We are using it with pride. Because our approach is such that it can bring all the people in the world under one banner without, you know, uh, caste or creed or religion. Because the practice is such that that will help in uh, maintaining the world and the universe together, keep it together. So that, that uh, is a very difficult question. But at the same time, you know, it has its limitations because of this. We have to run. We, we can also have all, uh, definitely what Supreme Court says today, a Hindu may not follow sitting in some other country. It is not uh, applicable to the Hindus sitting in elsewhere. The practices of Hindus follow in Indonesia is different from uh, other places. In Indonesia, for instance, I saw in Bali, people put the mugu in like that, you know. Every house, they clean it. There is some sort of a ornamental arrangement in, in front of the house. Practices have come up over a period of time there. So we cannot be very arbitrary about it. It has given us. But the only thing what we have to do is definitely we have to understand these things and have the practices with all sincerity and have more of the people who are practicing these things. That is what keeps it sustained. So I think if we have a few others sort of, you know, the questions are there. Uh, yes, I don't know whether I'm satisfied with Prasanna, but still somewhere there. Dr. Somnaji. Namaste, Namaste to all of you. Namaste. Learned and admirable leader. Only one sentence I want to join it here with the learned people what they said. Dharma, it is a concept. When you come to the Samskuti, it is action oriented. It depends upon the concept of the Dharma. When religion is going to say, as per our scriptures, we have to say that Dharma is in two types. Pravurti Dharma and Nivurti Dharma. Pravurti Dharma mostly related with the our life, way of life. Uh, most probably the, it is the secular life, what we have said. Laukika Jivana. Whereas the Nivurti Dharma related with the spiritual life mostly. On account of that, uh, in such a way, when the division is going to be said, uh, 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 the most to the root parts of the our universe has to be depend upon the three elements that is the Kala, Siti and the uh, Desha. On account of that only in every religious uh, ceremony is going to be taken with the Sankalpa which is going to be addressed with these three things. So the Pravurti Dharma or the Nivurti Dharma is such a thing as for this one it is the liberty to earn to take action or to think the things, concepts. But the Svetcha should not be condemned the, uh, 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 what we have to say, uh, sustainability of the society or the universe. For the sustainability of the universe or the society, we have to follow Pravurti Dharma and the Nivurti Dharma. Then the Nivurti Dharma is going to be said as the religion for the sustainability of the uh, universe. And the Pravurti Dharma is going to be say how to lead or uh, uh, what is your actions has to be taken over at that time. As for the, the both of them are also with relation with the Desha, Kala and the city. With those things, the Dharma is going to be get changed. It is not the change. Actually, what we have to say, it is going to be the Parinama. It is going to change its uh, form, not the concept. So, dharma is only one thing which has to be sustainability for, for the sustainability of the universe. So, it is one and the same in every place, in, at every time, uh, in every city also. But whereas what we are going to the pravarta dharma, it has to be get changed at the time and the place and the desha. That is the reason we are going to say kala dharma, not only the kala dharma, Kala itself, it is the dharma. Kalo is dharma haiva. Kala itself, it is the dharma. As per the time, we have to behave in such a way. That is the reason our smoothies are going to say that 
ಆಪದ್ಧರ್ಮ ಕಾಲಧರ್ಮ ದೇಶ ಧರ್ಮ ಇನ್ ಸಚ್ ಎ ವೇ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಮೈ ವ್ಯೂ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಸೊ ದ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ದನ್ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಟೋಟಲ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಪರ್ ದ ದೇಶ ಆಸ್ ಪರ್ ದ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಮೋರ್ ಓವರ್ ಬೌದ್ಧ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಬೌದ್ಧ ತರವಾತ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದ ಅದ್ವೈತ ವಿಶಿಷ್ಟ ಅದ್ವೈತ ವಿಶಿಷ್ಟ ಅದ್ವೈತ ತರವಾತ ದ್ವೈತ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಸ್ ಪರ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬಿನ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಇನ್ ದ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ ನ ಸೊ ಅವರ್ ಲೆರ್ನಡ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಸೇ ದಟ್ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಆಸ್ ಪರ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ದ ಪ್ರವರ್ತ ಪ್ರವರ್ತಕ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ರೂಲ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ರೆಗ್ಯುಲೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಹೌ ಟು ಲೀಡ್ ಅವರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಇನ್ ಸಚ್ ಎ ವೇ ಸೊ ಧರ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ದ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಒನ್ ಎಂಡ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಆಸ್ ದ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತಿ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಪರ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸಿಟಿ ಆರ್ ದ ದೇಶ thank you so much sir that was namaste namaste it was uh, i mean really really very valuable contribution uh, because this aspect i think we did not discuss till now pravrti and nivrti sir uh, is there any <laughs> reference to this uh, concept is it from bhagavad gita sir ah uh, bhagavad we can get the references from the bhagavad gita and the manusmriti also in such a way uh, ramayana is going to be given in such a view only the nivrti and pravrti concept sir uh, 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 rama has started from the pravrti he get uh, the moksha in such a way that it is going to be end with the nivrti dharma ramayana started with the pravrti dharma it ends with the nivrti dharma what we have to say the commentators are going to say in such a way uh, anybody has any comment to make here vivek ji in fact um, my point was similar to what somnath ji said in, not not in that depth but uh, i had uh, to ask or share this thought that religion and dharma right uh, are definitely Uh, not the same as a point that somnath ji also alluded to because in today's times my opinion is that while being in any religion whether in hinduism or outside hinduism one could still uh, follow the dharma relevant to the time okay for the overall universal good uh, because we see that in in examples of uh, indonesia as a country while their state religion is not hinduism but they are still culturally rooted and still follow some dharmic principles examples of japan are also there so my thought uh, was that religion and dharma are different and uh, dharma is more eternal religion is more time specific or situation specific because it originates from uh, a person's mind and is followed by a group of people uh, which is generally termed as religion that was my understanding and i would want to be corrected uh, by the seniors if i'm i'm thinking right uh, or or there should be any alteration to my thought process this this was discussed actually in the earlier session uh, comprehensive oh, sorry i missed uh, i i i like dr umamesh raj ji to clarify i'll just to react to this much uh, <clears throat> what swarnath ji has said uh, is right as i said you know we had time was uh, half an hour time when we originally discussed so nivrutti pravrutti i was aware of this concept so but when i try to put it in a simple manner dharma has two components in sanatan dharma if you see when you use the word dharma it could be sanatan dharma it has two two components one is the nivrutti and other is the pravrutti pravrutti component nivrutti component takes you to religion nivrutti component takes you to secular life what you do on a day to day basis what you have supposed to do in time with the uh, times kala dharma yuga dharma whatever it is nivrutti is one you know towards religion it prepares you the ground for the ultimate prashardhas moksha so all religious practices the smallest to the biggest ones all of them are essentially meant to prepare you slowly in small steps to move towards the moksha ultimately you don't you don't get get moksha suddenly one five morning it's like you know if you have to become a, a, an outstanding scholar in the world what is the amount of effort that you have to make if you have to realize the parabrahma is inside you if that realization has to come you have to prepare yourself for that realization it is an outstanding amount of work and it cannot be done by everybody but everybody can practice everybody has a right an opportunity equal opportunity for everybody to practice so there was no discrimination on this county is known by the fact there is a valmiki rishi who is a boya 
with vidura with sudra there are any number of such example that people from different castes so called castes also have taken to these practices and have risen to those levels so religion gives you steps for attaining moksha slowly but some of them get distorted in terms of practices over a period of time they need to be corrected the dharma is your conduct your righteous way conduct so that it is in tune with the times it is in tune with the law because what you do is supposed to maintain the order maintain the society in a sustainable manner that's what you know in elaborating somanath also has mentioned we discuss this so we have to have an order in a sustainable manner not for one day two days that's how our conduct is defined as per dharma so that we have a sustainable environment and society and the world order so when we say we have a take a take claim for vasudhaika kutumbakam our philosophy and approach is such that the world will, will be maintained we are advancing that theory that by virtue of this lifestyle this approach the world can be maintained sustained so that, that is the vasudhaika kutumbakam we are talking about so i think uh, nataraj you have uh, correctly got the understanding but <laughs> there is nothing to this thing you know you, you are right that way next ಸುಹಾಸಿನಿಜಿಂಗ್ಸ್ಟಮ್ಸ್ವಿಂಗ್ಸ್ಟಮ್ಸ್ವಿಂಗ್ಸ್ಟಮ್ಸ್ವಿ
whenever opportunity comes let us clarify our people that dharma is different religion is different and dharma yes. has many facets as we are telling secular dharma pravruti nivruti or in modern context we will say social dharma and then uh, environmental dharma nowadays it has come environmental dharma like that and religious dharma is also a part of it second thing is dharma can be known by the practices which we have in the society so these practices is a conglomerate of all these things a an hour in our life a part of the hour belongs to social activities a part of the hour belongs to religious activities a part belongs to health activities sometimes some of our activities are mixed with all those things some of our functions some of our activities or some of our acharas are having health component environmental component and this and sometimes for a long period of time our society has mixed all of them in very thoroughly that means a puja function has got a environmental component also in that one we worship all trees all animals and other things or we do hanuman puja or we do ganesh puja and all these things or we we offer milk for the snake lot, lot many things are there so these are all to be understood very thoroughly and we need not have to do that second thing is dharma has to be encoded dharma was encoded sanatan dharma also was encoded by some people definitely maybe long back so dharma has to be encoded dharma may have to be changed supreme court or constitution is also a part of dharma it is another way of bringing this dharma but how it is effective how it is powerful in the present context as uh, somanath ji has told desha kala sthiti paristhiti desha kala these three things will finally composite of these things will decide what is to be followed so today even parmacharya told also if this is in the constitution constitution takes the top priority in the book you written by elan raj vankar sesaya uh, about this kanti uh, pitaji par parmacharya the question was asked to him when a contradiction comes between constitution and our practice of dharma which we have to follow he told let us follow constitution we have to follow constitution ah maybe if something is amiss in the constitution we may try to change it that may take some time so we have to follow constitution that is today's paristhiti as per that one more thing is also there about this moksha and all these things there is no inanimity about the moksha in sanatan dharma various schools of thoughts are there so all are valid nobody could prove that his thought is perfect and others are no such thing is happening and this uh, parvacharya was asked by a uh, russian fellow a russian fellow russian gentleman has visited parvacharya and asked him a specific question if somebody follows good conduct good rules and other things that means secular dharma and he doesn't pray to god or any doesn't have any religion will he get moksha or not then parmacharya went into trance for some time maybe by minutes or so came back from trance and says and said yes he will get moksha this is what is written in the book nalte devudu something like this okay what parmacharya so dharma has got a wider meaning let us not mix with religion or let us not confuse with religion sometimes for a translation we may okay this is all what i wanted to add thank you yes so uh, i think that today uh, we saw a lot of participation we are coming uh, to the closing time and it appears that we probably need more, more time as it was assumed earlier on uh, this topic so next session would be on uh, yes, october 5th october 5th we have our next session of samskriti gyan mala and uh, the topic for the next session is bharatiya values exploring the indian ethos and its relevance today so we are likely to have sudhendra putti ji we will confirm it in the group very soon uh, as guest speaker and uh, uh, all of us are free to share our views and questions in the group in this regard so i think uh, with this uh, we can close if anybody sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramaya सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु मा कश्चित् दुःख भाग भवेत् ओम शान्ति शान्ति शान्ति